Howdy Moz fans, welcome to another edition of Whiteboard Friday. I'm Cyrus Shepard, today we're going to be talking about a big topic, Google's Disavow tool. We're going to be discussing when you should use it and what links you should target. Now this is kind of a scary topic to a lot of SEOs and webmasters. They're, they're kind of scared of the disavow tool. They think uh, it's not necessary, it can be dangerous, you shouldn't use it, but it's a real tool, it exists for a reason, and Google maintains it uh, for exactly webmasters to use it. So today we're going to be covering the scenarios which you might consider using it and what links you should, you should target. Now I want to start out with a big disclaimer. I want, I want this to be approved you know, by, uh, by the Google spokespeople. So the big disclaimer is the vast majority of sites don't need to disavow anything. Google's made tremendous progress over the last few years of determining what links to simply ignore. In fact, that was one of the big points of the last Penguin 4.0 algorithm update. In, in before Penguin, you had to disavow links all the time, but after Penguin 4.0, Google simply ignored most bad links. Emphasis on the word most. It's not a perfect system. They don't ignore all bad links. And uh, we'll come back to that point in a minute. There is a danger in using the disavow tool of disavowing good links. That's the biggest problem I see with people who, who use the disavow, is it's really hard to determine what Google counts as a bad link or a harmful link and what they count as a good link. So a lot of people over disavow and disavow, disavow too many things. So that's something you need to look out for. And my final point on, in the disclaimer is large healthy sites with good link profiles are more immune to bad links. So if you're the New York Times or Wikipedia and you have a few spam links pointing to you, it's really not going to hurt you. But if your link profile isn't as healthy, that's something you need to consider. So with those, dis with those disclaimers out of the way, let's talk about the opposite sort of situations, situations where you're going to want to consider using the disavow tool. Obviously, if you have a manual penalty. Now these have decreased significantly since Penguin 4.0, but they still exist. There are, people, are, people still get manual penalties. Definitely, that's what the disavow tool is for. But there's other situations. There was a conversation with Marie Haynes uh, that was published not too long ago where she was asking uh, in a Google Hangout, you know, are there other situations that you can use the disavow other than a penalty where your links may hurt you algorithmically? And John Mueller uh, said this certainly was a case that if you want to, dis if you want to disavow those obviously dodgy links, that could be hurting you algorithmically, it might help Google trust your link profile a little more. And if your link profile isn't that healthy in the first place, if you only have a handful of links and some of those are dodgy, you don't have a lot to fall back on. So disavowing those dodgy links can help Google trust the rest of your link profile a little more. Okay, with those caveats out of the way and situations where you do want to disavow, a big question people have is, well, what should I disavow? So I've, I've done this for a number of sites, and this is, these are my standards, and I'll, I'll share them with you. So good candidates to disavow. The best examples are often what Google will give you when they penalize you. Again, it's a little more rare, but when you do get a link penalty, uh, Google will often provide sample links. And uh, they don't tell you all the links to disavow, but they'll give you sample links and you can go through and you can look for patterns uh, in your links to, to see what matches, what Google is considering uh, a spammy link, and you definitely want to include those in your disavow file, file. If you've suffered a drop in traffic or you think Google is hurting you algorithmically because of your links, obviously if you participated in link schemes, if you've been a little bit naughty, violated Google's webmaster guidelines, you definitely want to take a look at those. And we're talking about links that you paid for or someone else paid for. It's possible uh, someone bought some, some shady links to try to bring you down, although Google is good at ignoring a lot of those. Uh, if you use PBNs, now I know, a lot of, I know a lot of black hat SEOs that use PBNs and swear by them, but when they don't work, when you've been hurt algorithmically or you've, you've been penalized or your traffic's down and you're using PBNs, that's a good candidate to put in your disavow file. Non-editorial links. Google has a whole list of non-editorial links. We're going to link to it in, in uh, the transcript below. But these are links that the webmaster didn't intentionally place. Where things like widgets, uh, forum spam, signature spam, really shady, uh, dodgy links. Uh, that, that you control. And a good, a good judge of all of these links is often in the anchor text. 
Uh, is it a money anchor text? Are these money high value keywords? Do you control the anchor text? You can generally tell a really shady link by, by looking at the anchor text. Is it, is it optimized? Could I potentially benefit? Do I control that? And if the answer is yes to those questions, it's usually a good candidate for the disavow file. Then there's a whole set of links in a bucket that I call the maybe file. You might want to disavow. I oftentimes do, uh, but not necessarily. So uh, a lot of these would be malware. Uh, you, you click on a link, and it gives you, you know, a red browser warning that this site contains uh, spam, or your, your, your computer freezes up, those toxic links. If I was Google, I probably wouldn't want to see those, those types of links linking to a site. I don't like them linking to me. I probably throw them in the disavow. Cloak sites. These are sites when you click on the link, they show Google one set of results, but a user's a, a different set of results. Uh, the way you find these is that when you're searching for your links, it's usually a good idea to uh, look at them using a Googlebot user agent. If you use Chrome, you can get a browser extension. Uh, we'll link to some of these in, in the post below. But look at everything, at, see everything through Google's eyes using a Googlebot user agent, and you can find those cloaked pages. They're, they're kind of a red flag in terms of link quality. Shady 404s. Now, what do I mean by a shady 404? You click on the link, and the page isn't there. In fact, maybe the whole domain isn't there. Uh, it look, you've got a whole bunch of these. It looked like it just something's off about these 404s. And the reason I throw these in the disavow file is because usually there's no record of what the link was. It was usually some sort of spammy link. They're trying to rank for something. And then for whatever reason, they, they remove the entire domain or it's removed by the domain register. Because I don't know what was there, I usually, I usually disavow it. It's not going to help me in the future when Google uh, discovers that it's gone anyway, so it's usually a safe bet to disavow those shady 404s. And finally, sometimes you like to, you find those bad neighborhood links in your link profile. These are things like pills, poker, porn, the three Ps of bad neighborhoods. If I was Google and I saw porn linking to my non-porn site, I would consider that pretty shady. Now, maybe they'll, maybe they'll just ignore it, but I just don't feel comfortable having a lot of these uh, bad, spammy neighborhoods linking to me. So I might consider these to throw in the disavow file as well. Now, finally, we often see a lot of uh, people disavowing links that maybe aren't that bad. Again, I want to go back to the point, it's hard to tell what Google considers a good link, a valuable link, and a poor link. And there is a danger in throwing too much in your disavow file which a lot of people do. They just throw the whole kitchen sink in there. And if you do that, those links aren't going to count, and your traffic might go down. So one thing I don't personally put in my disavow file are scraper sites. You see, you, you get a good link you know, in an online magazine, and then 100 other sites copy it. Uh, these are scraper sites. Google are picking them up. I don't put those in the disavow file because Google is getting better and better at assigning the authority of those links uh, to the, original, to the original site. And I don't find that putting them in the disavow file uh, has really helped, uh, at least with the sites I work with. The, the same with feeds. Uh, you see a lot of feed links uh, in Google's list of, uh, in your link report. These are just raw HTML feeds, uh, RSS feeds, uh, again, for the same reason. Unless there are feeds or uh, scraper sites from this list over here. If there are feeds and, and scrapers of good sites, no need. Auto-generated spam. These are sites that are automatically generated by, by robots and programs. They, uh, they, they're usually pretty harmless. Google's pretty good at ignoring them. And you can tell the difference between auto-generated spam and, you know, link scheme, again, by the anchor text. Auto-generated spam usually does not have optimized anchor text. It's usually your page title or it's, you know, it's usually broken. These are really low quality pages that Google generally ignores uh, that probably you don't need, that I wouldn't put in a disavow. And simple low quality. These are things like uh, directories, um, pages that you look at and like, oh wow, they, don't, they only have three pages on their site, no one's linking to them. Leave it up to Google to ignore those uh, and they generally do a pretty good job or Google can count them. If for, for things like this, unless it's obvious, unless you're violating these rules, I like to leave them in. I don't like to include them in, in the disavow. So we got our list. A few pro tips when you actually put your disavow file together, if, if you choose to do so. If you find one bad link on a spammy domain, it's usually a good idea to disavow the entire domain. Uh, because 
there's, there's a good chance that there's other links on there that you're just not spotting. Um, so using the domain operator in your disavow file is usually a good idea, unless it's a site like WordPress or something with a lot of, a lot of subdomains. Uh, where do you find your links to disavow? First choice is generally Search Console, the link report in Search Console, because that's the links that Google is actually using. It is helpful to use third-party tools, uh, such as Moz, Link Explorer, AREF, SEMrush, whatever your link index is. And that's because you can uh, sort through the anchor text. Uh, Google, when Google gives you their link report, they, they don't include the anchor text. It's very helpful to use those anchor text reports, uh, such as you'd get in Moz Link Explorer. And you, you can sort through and you can find your over-optimized anchor text, your, 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 spammy, your spammy anchor text. Uh, you can find patterns and sort. And that's often really helpful to do that um, in, in order to sort your information. Uh, if, you, if you have a disavow file, and this happens on a lot of older sites, uh, if you're auditing a site, it's a really good idea to go in and uh, check and see if a disavow file already exists. It's possible it was created prior to Penguin 4.0. It's possible there's a lot of good links in there already. And you can try removing links from that disavow file and see if it helps your rankings. Because those older, those older disavow files often contain a lot of links that are actually good, that are actually helping you. Uh, and finally, record everything. Treat this as any other SEO process. Record everything. Think of it as an experiment. Uh, if you disavow, if you make a mistake and your, your rankings drop or your rankings go up, you want to know what caused that, and you, you need to be responsible for that and be a good SEO. All right, that's all we have for today. Leave your own disavow comments uh, below, and if you like this video, please share. Thanks, everybody.